Good evening. The fires which are currently ravaging the Amazon rainforest in Brazil have prompted the leaders of France and Ireland to declare they won't support a major EU trade deal with South America unless Brazil does more to bring the situation under control. Campaigners have blamed the environmental policies of Brazil's president Jair Bolsonaro for the spread of the fires, which are threatening a major source of the world's oxygen. There have been more than 75,000 blazes so far this year, most notably in the north of Brazil. That's an 85% increase on the same period last year. The fires are the most intense in the region for almost a decade. Well, our correspondent Camilla Motta is in Umaitá in the Amazon, and we can join her now. Camilla. Yes, uh, we're here at the fringe of the Amazon rainforest in a region where fires are usually caused by human action in order to open up land space for agriculture. We drove a couple of hundred miles today and from the highway we could see a lot of land burn. We actually got closer to one of the fire spots and what struck us was how fast the flames could travel on the trail of destruction they left behind. The flames in the Amazon continue to rage. Thousands of fires, almost impossible to control. This is the world's biggest rainforest and carbon store, home to 20 million people. We traveled to one area on the fringe of the rainforest, where the flames have devoured huge areas. Firefighters in the state of Rondonia, one of the most affected by the Amazon fires, have been working here for the past two weeks trying to put out the flames, but resources are an issue here as it's a vast area with few people on the ground and a low humidity and strong winds add to the challenge as sometimes the fire can spread as fast as 30 or 40 kilometers per hour. The fires here threaten many homes. One man told us his wife had fled while he tries to protect their land. It's a dangerous situation. We have lots of crops here and everything is burning. The cajou trees. I had to move the animals so they don't burn too. Farmers and loggers are blamed for starting the fires, as the Amazon is relentlessly cleared for cultivation. Brazil's controversial right-wing president Jair Bolsonaro has championed the exploitation of the rainforest. Now, though, Brazil is facing international pressure. European leaders are calling it a global emergency. Brazil's president has accused them of a colonial mindset and charities working to save the rainforest of interference. Those countries that send money here, they're not doing it for charity. I hope everyone can understand that. They're doing it because they have a vested interest. They want to interfere with our sovereignty. They're looking for riches under the soil. It's the Amazon's indigenous people who are suffering the most. Some have been attacked and killed as loggers and farmers try to push them off the land. With each passing day, we see the destruction advance. Deforestation, invasion, logging. We are sad because the forest is dying at every moment. We feel the climate changing. And the world needs the forest. We need it. And our children need it. As the Amazon burns, the world is now paying attention. Brazil's president says he may send in the army to help tackle the flames. Camila Veras Mota, BBC News, in the Amazon. Well, world leaders have described the fires as an acute emergency, and today thousands of people joined protests outside Brazilian embassies across Europe, demanding that President Bolsonaro take immediate action to deal with the fires. Well, our diplomatic correspondent James Robbins has been looking at the impact that Brazil's leader has had on the rainforest, and he's here now, James. The Amazon rainforest is huge, not only in sheer geographical size, but also in its importance sustaining life on Earth. It covers about 2.1 million square miles. That's about half the size of Europe. It's home to 3 million species of plants and animals and has billions of trees, which absorb CO2 and slow global warming. But it's under severe threat. On average, an area the size of a football pitch is cleared every minute. Brazil's President Bolsonaro is blamed for actively encouraging the rainforest's destruction. Why? President Bolsonaro won last year's election partly by promising radical change in the Amazon, opening it up for farming, diluting environmental laws and reducing fines for those who break them. It was a green light and not just to the poor, 
Established farmers say it's right to clear the forest. Nós temos que desenvolver a Amazônia, né? Porque vamos supor aqui na região do Baixo Amazonas, na região de Santarém, vive mais de 4 milhões de pessoas. Então, se precisa ter um desenvolvimento também, é um direito constitucional. But President Bolsonaro's approach has been condemned by Emmanuel Macron of France. He's preparing to welcome leaders of other wealthy countries in the G7 to be Ritz. He says the FARs must be top of their weekend summit agenda. The president's tweeted, Our house is burning, literally. The Amazon, the lungs which produce 20% of our planet's oxygen, is on fire. It is an international crisis. But what, if anything, can the leaders actually do? France is threatening to block a major EU trade deal negotiated with a group of South American countries, including Brazil, if President Bolsonaro doesn't change his stance on climate change. But that would hit trade between both continents and Germany, although supporting the concern doesn't necessarily support such a drastic remedy. Of course, it's not just Brazil where Amazon fires are burning. The Amazon rainforest straddles a number of countries. The others affected include Venezuela, Bolivia and Colombia. But much the biggest loss of trees and habitat is in Brazil. And that's where the global focus will remain. Rita. James, thank you. Well, as we've heard, the Amazon rainforest will be high on the agenda of world leaders at the G7 meeting in France this weekend. Our diplomatic correspondent James Landale is in Biarritz for us now. James. Rita, President Macron believes that these fires in the Amazon are a good example of where the world can come together, agree common action against a common threat. And he wants to use this summit here in France this weekend to make a stout defence of that kind of multilateral action. His challenge will be actually reaching agreement on this and several other issues where there are growing tensions within this group of seven nations, above all between the United States and Europe. And that too will present a challenge for Boris Johnson. This is the first uh, time that the Prime Minister uh, has been on the inter international stage in his new role. He wants to use it as an opportunity to try to reaffirm Britain's international credentials, saying, look, Britain is not going to retreat from the world after Brexit. It's going to stay at the heart of global alliances. But he's going to be torn between two stools here. He wants to reach out on the one hand to President Trump in the hope of encouraging a post-Brexit UK-US trade deal. But on the other hand, on many of the key issues that will be discussed, the Iran nuclear deal, climate change, global trade, Britain is firmly in the European camp. So there is a very tricky, narrow path for the Prime Minister to navigate here in France this weekend. Uh, and it's a path not without risk. Rita. James, thank you. James Land.